Hey guys, Joshua Peterson and Peterson Elector. I want to talk to you today about upgrading your service from typically um, some people have gone out to their house, they've had 60 amps, 70 amps, 90 amps, 100 amps, 125, 150, and finally 200. Um, typical homes are going to go from 100 to a 200. Um, they do have a 320 meter can uh, that allows you close to 400 amps to a house. Um, but those are special occasions that the utilities will let you. Uh, you're normally only supposed to have one uh, meter to a property. Um, if you have multiple structures, it may be metered with one. Uh, I'm not talking multifamily, I'm just saying, uh, or any strip mall, I'm just saying a generic house, uh, freestanding single family dwelling. Um, if you have multiple other sheds or barns or mother-in-law suites or another house, they usually will have you tap off of that same service with one meter. Um, I did see a rare occasion with an old customer in Denver in an alley. Uh, they built a, a, a freestanding a garage last year with a mother-in-law suite above it four car garage they did let them actually off the alley have a separate drop off of that can the transformer up above from the house which was kind of unique normally you don't see that um, in this case this is right here where they the service entrance comes in and they did do a bore here uh, a lot of places such as Loveland are uh, charging about a thousand dollars Estes I heard is twelve hundred and Fort Collins now is 900 to 1,000 bucks more just for the extra 150 to the 200 amps, that extra 50 amps. Um, it is a one-time fee. Um, I hope most contractors are being honest with you and telling you that. This video is done in December of 2017. Our new NEC electrical code has come out such as this year of June of 2017. Um, so as far as the standard go, the bypass lever is not an option. We did have a customer in Denver that we gave an estimate for. Uh, Branch hit him two months ago. Um, he went out and got a permit pulled uh, through a homeowner. I guess some cities are allowing homeowners to do service changes. A service changes such as a meter uh, nippling through to your panel, your service entrance conductors coming up, or your service riser going out. Um, some cities are making you take a test. Some are not. I don't really think that that's smart. Uh, this guy went ahead and put in a Home Depot big box store looking meter can which was fairly small looked a lot like that right there actually a little smaller um, and sure enough the city and I won't mention the city but they passed him um, and that's not a good thing because he didn't have a strap going up from three foot coming up that conduit he's starting to bend already from the tree and the weight overhead for his um, hub that attaches which is kind of a breakaway point and then he also did not have the proper grounding and then his mast was four foot above the house rather than three so he didn't uh, take a tie wire to the truss and then tar around that so there was a few violations plus I did not I sit back to back a nipple he didn't have that he had a plastic bushing you can't have that you if you use uh, a metal nipple such as this or this you have to have a bond bushing because there is no point of disconnect outside like his so you know there was about five violations that I saw just visiting the job and then I called the inspector up and I said hey how did you even pass this last month these codes have been around for years especially the in the Denver area for these cans to be a bypass lever with Excel power um, and so he said, well, you know, he tried to tell him, blah, blah, blah. But I says, you know, if I pull a permit, you're going to enforce this. He says, of course I will. So I says, well, you should have enforced it for the homeowners. So homeowners, if you're doing your own work, I don't really advise you on a service change. I don't think that's, there's a lot of codes and a lot of knowledge to get this in. I've been doing this 20 years as of 2017. And I think that this is probably something that most people should not try to tackle. Um, some inspectors will guide them right through it. Uh, you know, I guess the taxpayer is more important, but it took us seven years to get our licenses. I really think you should hire someone for this. People say, how much is a service change? Well, if for our company, it's not gonna be typically less than 2,800 to start. And that's with the permit. But sometimes there are more fees involved. It's sometimes $210 for a disconnect, reconnect. And then again, like I told you, it's $1,000 just to have the larger wire in here. Now this home, as you can see from here to here, was rebored, and I asked them to come out because it looked like it might have been a two odd or a four odd in here. But I couldn't get in this can. And I can't see because I had a tag and Fort Collins will not let me cut this. This is the city I'm in. So they came out within, you know, an hour or so and opened it up and talked to me about it. 
The max that they can go up to is 150 amp on this 2 watt aluminum. Now, it is about $1,400 since this was already bored to repull this as a 4 watt for them. If they bored this, I had a quote from another utility company. It was about four grand to get it bored because we had the same issue. Sidewalk here or a tree or a neighbor or whatever. And so just to get that board can be about four grand plus your thousand dollars for the upgrade plus any other fee for the disconnect reconnect. Then you also have to have your permit fee involved, which is anywhere from $150 to $250, $300. And then there's an inspection time of a two to four hour window. So, and keep in mind, your power can't go back on until this is upgraded correctly. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining us. Hopefully, this will try to help you out when you tackle one of these upgrades. And last thing, the code says in Article 230.79 that the minimum ampacity to a home is 100 amps. And a home is described as a bathroom, an oven, and a dwelling place to sleep. So, if you have an outbuilding, that's not the same thing. If it's an outbuilding with a single-family dwelling and a full kitchen, the county or city is approved then that requires also a minimum of 100 amps. Thanks guys for joining us, have a great day.